Welcome to a small series of videos I'll be doing on c very fast creation of a uh, asset for Arma 3. Uh, what I'm going to do in the next few videos is show you how to go from a high poly model to a low poly model, set up the materials, bake in max and um, X normal, uh, then take the information from there and bring it to DDO and U2 from Quixel, which is quite quite amazing. And it will show you how to get these then textures into an RV mat into Arma 3 uh, together with some oxygen setups. Uh, this first video will show you um, some high poly modeling techniques that I use. Uh, forgive me for showing somewhere from the middle, but uh, I decided to start filming when I was already in progress. But since the whole the creation of the whole add-on took about an hour and a half, uh, it's really not that what you're seeing is really only five minutes of work um, that I started with. Now what you see me doing now is creating really a base mesh with uh, support edges. See I'm not worrying about the smoothing but the only thing I have is a mesh smooth modifier put on top with uh, three iterations on the standard uh, editable poly object. You can see I, I'm extensively using the um, quick, uh, quick loop tool uh, in the ribbon to create these supporting edges which make these very very nice rounded edges on the, on the model. Uh, what I'm creating is a TM62M standard Russian army anti-tank mine. Uh, it's a very simple object, n not n nothing complicated. So, as you can see, I'm just extruding uh, polygons. Um, doing some scaling and as such. Okay, now I'm uh, just copying some of the faces to be used for the next uh, object. So the base at this point is done, the base of the mine. And I'm just using some fast clever techniques to get the right sizes and shapes. Uh, basically extruding, deleting and adding stuff. I'll bring up my pivot. Make it a little bigger than the hole. And then again, quickly start filling up the geometry. Uh, I'd like to add that I'm not trying to capture too much detail because uh, it's this is considered to be a a low priority asset so I know that they won't be looked at much and basically I don't want to spend too many hours on it so uh, as you can see it's also mostly freehand so I'm not uh, I'm just basically looking at a, a photo of the of the mine on my second screen and not bothering with things like blueprints and stuff. The only thing I had was measurements with dimensions more like Again, I'm adding some edge loops to support those smoothing edges. And you can see I'm building a, a high poly first. So I don't start with a low poly and then make it into high poly. I build a high poly first to make sure that I have everything I need, uh, all, the, all the geometry, and then I decimate the high poly into a low poly to be used uh, for baking. And that you will see in the second video. That's the second object done. Uh, 
I like to put everything in, in gray and with black wireframes, just it looks more pleasant to me. Never forget to save. Save constantly because it's nothing worse than losing work. Uh, when you're working on a very large model and there's high probability of something going wrong, then always do incremental saves. So adding a number behind the name. Okay, so there's one more object to be created for this. So I'm just doing some fast selection. And again, copying already existing geometry to create a new one. Up the bottom. And just do a little inset to create that supporting edge again. Okay. Now this top part is somewhat of a kind of a screw top, so uh, I'm going to create some uh, extended uh, well I guess grips, I you can call them. Selecting these faces and extruding them just by a little bit. The size looks about right. Okay, next step is to create edge loops, of course, for all this new geometry. This is, of course, already gets a little bit tricky because <coughs> um, what happens is that smoothing really doesn't like <coughs> sharp transitions from one kind of shape to another. So you need to be careful how uh, you structure your support loops. as you will see a bit later. That's it, add another mesh smooth. And that's really good enough. See, I'm, I'm trying to see whether I can smooth it, <coughs> control it a little bit more, but in the end, it's uh, it's really good enough. So it it will create more problems than solutions. Okay. I'll just position it correctly. And one more thing, there's going to be some floating geometry on the top cap, uh, some protruding cylinders. So I'm going to quickly do those.
and I start by simply just creating a cylinder. Since it's going to be smoothed and not used for the low poly, <coughs> it doesn't really matter. It could be pretty, pretty simple. I'm going to bring down the number of segments as it's easier to control and delete everything except for the top cap because all I need is really that cylindrical face which I'm then going to extrude and indent sort of a button I think in the in the design it's actually uh, the connector where the fuse pin is located In the pictures, there's there's two of them. One is uh, black and one is silverish. So I'm just going to copy this one. They look almost identical. <coughs> now this is floating geometry, which only will be reflected in the 